welcome to Gen Friends. I'm so glad to have this great panel tonight. We have Melissa Barker, our archive lady. Hi, Melissa. Hello, hello. Glad to be here tonight. I'm so glad you're here too. We have Shelly Murphy, Family Tree Girl. Hey, Shelly. Hey there, everyone. Hey. Glad to be here. We have a new person joining our Gen Friends panelist. Laura Hedgecock's in the house. Woohoo, Laura! We're so glad she's not in the house. <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> I'm in my house. You're in your house. You're in our house. Okay. We're so glad you're here. Um, Laura is a writer. She's a wonderful interviewer. I just spent a week with her at um, at Roots Tech, and I just wanted to listen to all the questions that she asks. So she is going to be a wonderful addition to our panel. But guys, do you see who we have sitting here in a Starbucks in Spanish Fork, Utah? It's Nathan. Yes, it's Nathan Dylan Goodman. We are so happy to have you here. Now, Thank you. I'm happy to be here. I don't know how much of an introduction you really need, but Nathan. <laughs> Nathan, I've got a copy of this latest book, number eight, is the author of these geneal genealogy, I can't even talk, I'm so tired, a genealogical <laughs> crime mystery story. So he, he writes these and he's on book eight and um, they're forensics genealogy stories and his main character is Morton Ferrier who has all sorts of things going on with him. He um, has his own storyline where he's looking for people and then he gets hired by the craziest people. To do the craziest, to do the craziest <laughs> thing. So, just I would just want to start out by asking you, how did, when did you think of him up? I mean, how did you realize? Oh, there's this weird character <laughs> named Morton Barrier, and I'm going to write books about him. How did you come weird. up with him? Well, weird. The, well, he's not weird, but man, he gets himself into situations that he does. Yes. Um, so basically, uh, I, I did a master's degree in um, creative writing mm -hmm. in about 2007 to 2009. And um, I thought it'd be quite interesting to uh, write a story about, like, in the detective genre, but where the genealogist does the main character who has to solve a crime in the past, but using genealogy. And um, so I started writing it and my classmates uh, really enjoyed it and said, keep going. And, uh, and actually, in my very first draft, I had him uh, killed off at the end. And they said, no, don't do that. And, uh, <laughs> I'm glad, and, and, you, I'm and glad was, you listened yeah, to them. I'm very glad I did. That would have yeah, been bad, bad for off. the series. <laughs> it was, wouldn't it? <laughs> really bad. Yeah, and that's, uh, and that's uh, where he came from. And um, I really didn't see at the beginning that it would uh, last this long, never mind have uh, more books to come. So uh, I'm glad he didn't die, yes. I'm glad he didn't die either. Yeah. In, in your mind, so you've done eight books. Mm. In your mind, how how many more? I mean, do you <laughs> have more. I And keep writing them. We, every time, you guys, every time we see him somewhere, we're like, what are you doing? You're not writing. He had the nerve <laughs> to come, he had the nerve to come spend a whole week at Rootstack and spend time skiing as well. He wasn't I writing. I'm, I'm no writing. Report. No writing. Skiing. <laughs> no writing. <laughs> Having fun no. at a conference, but no writing. <laughs> so, but do you have how many books in advance? Do you, do you have them planned out, or how so, do you do that? Uh, I don't have an, an end point, which is uh, something it's good to say. That's um, very I good. kind of, I've, yeah, I've got a very good idea for the next three books, um, and so they kind of. They just the a very general idea, and they mm. just sit in my brain and uh, festering, and uh, <laughs> waiting for me to give it a bit more time. And it's quite good that way because I never get to the end of a book and then think, "What am I going to do now?" I always know I've got you know loads and loads and loads of uh, book ideas um, to come, and so they just kind of sit in my brain. And then I think, "Oh, this would be a good idea to add to that," or "This would uh, be a good story development in that story." So. Um, yeah, there's at least at least three more, but I can't I can't see an end point. Yet. Okay, that's great. I'm gonna ask you one more question before I turn it over to these panelists. So, when you're going to conferences and you're meeting all these genealogists, do you think to yourself, "Oh, I could use them for a character"? <laughs> <laughs> oh, all the crazy people I meet. No, um... <laughs> I'm thinking of a couple of us you just were talking to. Yeah. Don't put us in a book, please. <laughs> no. People, um, people would know who we were. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to disguise it. <laughs> I know just Laura's keeping quiet there. <laughs> yeah. No, 
I am because I'm just thinking, I've actually seen mystery writers as a fundraiser. They'll let people have a contest to be written in their book and they might be like a scientist character or maybe you could run a contest of have your least favorite ancestor killed off. That's oh, a that good would idea. Be, actually, yeah. That it would be a good That's idea. A good idea. Oh. Yeah. Huh, I do wow. sometimes run competitions to have your uh, person's name featured in the book, but so far they've been nice characters. I haven't made them <laughs> bad or killed them off. So that's a good idea though. Yeah. You're I like good, that. Laura. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. What do you guys want to ask? I have a question. All right. That's book eight. Tell me about one through eight. And I know we're talking about eight, but it's book eight, correct? Right. So, are they, so yes. anybody hadn't gotten to this point yet, tell us or, what they need. Are to they do. independent, all eight? Or, you know, do you need to read them in order? Or can I just get that one and, and I'll know what's going on? Um, so basically, they can be read as standalone books. So there's okay. each, each book, he has to solve a, a crime in the past. Um, and by the end of it, it's solved. Um, the only thing is, it is a series, and I usually say to people, if they haven't read any, uh, to start at the beginning, because uh, the main character, Morton Farrier, he's uh, adopted, and so he's trying to find out about his biological family, and that runs through the series as a, a subplot. So um, I think of, the, of all the books that you could pick up and read out of sequence, the latest one, The Sterling Affair, is one that you, mm -hmm. it would completely all make sense, because there isn't too much mm -hmm. of the backstory in that one. But yeah. if you've read none, I usually say, yeah, start at the beginning and work your way through. If you like the first one, if you don't like the first one, then just give up there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not going to be your agent, but maybe I better be your agent right now because we can't have that. <laughs> start with the first, actually. Okay, so here we go. You can read the current one that's out right now. Yeah, you can. Yes. And it's a standalone. Yeah. Yes, or yep. you could go through the series Just start one through to the beginning. Eight. Yes, yes. Now you're okay. running. A, you're running a special, right? So you can get on and you can read the Asylum, which was the first one for free, right? On Kindle. Yes, that's a, a really short uh, taster of the series. It's called oh. the Asylum, and it's downloadable for free from my website, right. um, or it's on Amazon, um, okay, and that gives you just a that? flavor for the. It's called the Asylum. And it's like a little taster. So uh, mm -hmm. for people who aren't sure about it, they can read that one and then move on to the series proper. And we'll put the notes for that in our show notes. So you can Okay, yeah, can I'm go looking at all of them right oh, now. Oh, look at she's. I, <laughs> I love books. Shelly's already you looking too. at them. All right, <laughs> who else? Who else has got a question? I've got a question about um, writing. I'm an aspiring author and as an, an in addition to being an archivist, first of all, let me put a plug in. You need more archivists in your book. Oh. You, okay. need, you need more archivists <laughs> in your book. Anyway, um, and so no I noticed that your, I know this one, like I said, I haven't read the first seven, self-published. Is that correct? Yes, yes okay. through Amazon. Um, that's one of the things that I think about being, hopefully when I publish my first book, about self-publishing or trying to get a publisher. Um, can you tell us why you self-published? Yeah, so once I'd finished uh, Hide in the Past, the first one, I kind of looked at different routes and I have friends who have published traditionally and have got agents and have got, uh, have been published through, you know, well-known big companies and, and basically they were still having to have a second job because the royalties were appalling. Um, they weren't marketed or promoted because they weren't one of the big names. Um, and so they hardly spent any time writing thereafter. And they were tied into these ridiculous contracts. And I just thought, I don't want to do that. I would like writing to try to be my full-time job, which I'm very fortunate it, it is now. Um, and the KDP service through Amazon was just completely fantastic. So simple and intuitive. And basically I get like 60 to 70% royalties on the Kindle download, which is my biggest market. And I just haven't looked... Back. I haven't even I didn't try to get published traditionally and I also have complete creative control over the book so I choose the cover I say when it's going to be published and if it's going to be changed and you know up, updates and etc and um, yeah I, I would it'd have to be a very very significant offer for me to go anywhere else to be honest great 
I have a question. Shelly's got a question. <laughs> Go ahead, Shelly. The titles. There, it, this is an interesting to me. Um, the titles. You as an author, and again, I, I commend you because you really have total control on what's happening here. Yeah. So, um, which, which is good, and I think it's good for people to hear that because there's a lot of options out there right now, and, yes. and we don't always know what's the best thing to do, but you have in control says a lot right there. So dealing with your titles, and we're coming up to, say, from hiding the past right up to the Sterling Affair, how, how do you come up with a title? And we as researchers also struggle with that a lot of times with the titles of our presentation. Mm -hmm. We might understand the intent or where we're trying to go, and we're trying to tell a story as well. And also, here's the resources. Well, so what, question, what work are you going into dealing with the titles? So usually they just, they come to me as I'm, as I'm writing the book. It's not very often that the title comes before I've started. Although with the most recent one, The Sterling Affair, um, with the research I was doing and the reading around, I, I saw other books and um, archive titles that were The Something Affair. I thought that's quite a, a nice catchy thing because it could be an affair as in um you know a, a, between two people um a relationship affair or it could be you know how things are like the perfumer affair you know it's mm -hmm. a, like a scandal um i thought that it could have several meanings so i thought it'd be some, the something affair and that would kind of depend then about the, the middle part the what affair so the sterling affair is a, is a character's name in it who's very important some of them um so like the missing man that title didn't come to me until I was quite a way through the book and I was writing a newspaper headline. But I can't give too much away because it's an essential point to the book, but um, I was writing a newspaper headline and the headline in the newspaper in the book was The Missing Man. I thought, actually, that's, uh, that's a good title there. So I don't, I don't usually labour over it. Um, it just seems to come out of the story, generally. That's awesome. That is that's awesome. really awesome. That's your. That's because he's so creative, you know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and and the lost. <laughs> he angel. agrees. He's like, yeah, that's exactly what. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm loving. So modest. It. Very modest. Very modest. Yeah. Oh yeah, incredibly. So now, where do the stories come from? So we got the title. Where are the stories? Is it coming from your actual research or research you hear about? Because so you are a researcher, of, you do genealogy research, right? Yes. Yes, yeah. I, I started uh, with genealogy when I was about 12, and I've been doing it as a hobby ever since. Um, 30 years, I know you can't believe that, but yes, that's true. Um, 42. Uh, and, Shocker. Yeah, 40, no, you can't be that um, old. I know, I know. <laughs> Uh, um, so yes, um, none of the, the Spyglass file, which is what, uh, book five, that's very, very loosely based on uh, my grandmother's story, but the rest of them are um, not based on anything in my family tree, but they're things that I've encountered. So it could be a news, wow. just a general news story. Mm -hmm. um, it could be that it's in a family history journal. Um, the Sterling Affair came because I'm, I subscribe to the National Archives newsletter. And it just happened to say that some spy records have been released from the 50s and 60s. And um, I thought, oh, that would be really interesting. And that lends itself immediately to genealogy because someone, right. if they're a spy, they could very easily be trying to change their name and their identities. And mm -hmm. the genealogists could then, you know, backtrack and work out who they are. So it comes from a variety of sources, uh, but usually it comes out of my own research, uh, just generally, but not my own family. Mm -hmm. So, I would love for you to tell listeners a little bit more about how you've taken this huge genre of mystery and kind of made a great niche for yourself in the genealogical mysteries and going to places like Roots Tech and things like that and how that all works together. And if that was an accident or brilliant plan. <laughs> <laughs> Well, obviously, it was a brilliant plan, Laura. Um, <laughs> it was an accident, actually. When I when I was writing, <laughs> to be honest, when I was uh, when I was doing my masters in creative writing, um, I really didn't I didn't think that such a book uh, anything existed in that genre at all. And I thought I was being quite clever in in creating this 
character and this genre um, because it was at the time when Who Do You Think You Are was really popular and, and family history was really kind of on the rise uh, as a hobby. And, um, and so and that, that was kind of the thing that made me do it, but it was also the thing that made, made me then put it to one side because I thought, well, there isn't, there isn't a market for this. You know, there, there are, there's no such book out there. So I then put it to one side and carried on as a primary school teacher. And it wasn't until a few years later that I then noticed that Steve Robinson writes in that, who writes in that genre as well. Mm -hmm. And I stumbled across his first book and then um, I thought, oh, wow, he's, you know, it's published. He's on, he was on book three, I think, by then. And I thought, well, this clearly is a market out there for this. And it made me then kind of get hide in the past back out and tweak it and edit it and um, work on it to then release it. And um, yeah, you're, you're right, it's a niche, but as you, you'll see at Roots Tech, it's a huge niche. You know, there's like 20 to 30,000 perfectly made <laughs> readers for me there. You know, it's, it's the exact market that uh, I'm looking for. But you know, I'd like to say too, that, that even if you're not into genealogy and you like mysteries, it's perfect. You don't have to be a genealogist to enjoy the book the books, the series. Oh, so, yeah. you know, that, that point needs to be made as well. Cause I don't want people to think, Oh, well, why would I, my mom's been reading them. She's not a genealogist. So right. <laughs> she's enjoying yeah. them. So. Yeah. So uh, what's good. the age range? Is it to all adults or can younger? I, I, pro I probably would say, cause there's, I, it's not too gory or uh, like gratuitous, but I would say probably from kind of like 12 onwards, I would say. Okay. Okay. And then upwards to 105. <laughs> <laughs> At least. Ask Laura. <laughs> <laughs> How old do you have to be? Oh, Laura. Oh, oh that's I yeah, heard right. that. We're getting the age dig. <laughs> Them's fighting words. And, and you, you've, you've got you've got to understand uh -huh. that the, the three of us just spent a week together at Roots Tech, and and it's. <laughs> Not, not yeah. that we like. Only well, Sherry and I were in the room together. Let's clarify that as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, okay, Sherry, yeah. I'm going to change this around. <laughs> Let's go to the titles of the, not the titles, but the the book cover. Oh yeah, they're mm -hmm. beautiful. The, the covers the are gorgeous. Strategy and the methods that you're. Doing. I'm looking at all eight of them right now. And yeah. and another question would be. Uh, the era of each one. Are we in the same era? Okay, I'll let you go. Okay, so um, yeah, so each book uh, is is half set in the modern day. So whenever it was written, so yeah. Morton Farrier is in the modern day. So the first book is 2013. Um, the Sterling Affair is uh, last year, 2019. Last year, 2019. Yes, 2019. Um, <laughs> I think and, so. Yeah, and the past part changes with each book so you've got smuggling in the 1820s on the south coast of England you've got 1914 to 18 uh, first world war the second world war sterling affair is 1950s can you still hear me okay because it starts yes, yes. being very very rude and daring <laughs> to make things for people um <laughs> sorry I can't um, wait to read these books <laughs> yeah. so, because uh, so, yeah. his personality is really coming out here. Oh yeah. So, so um, the book covers. The, yeah, so the, the period change for each book, okay. um, and the, the book covers. So uh, they're designed by an artist, a distant relation of mine. He's somebody I found through my family tree, Patrick Dengate. Mm -hmm. uh, he's an artist in Michigan, and um, he basically is designed from uh, the America ground onwards. So book four onwards he's done all the book covers so usually I go to him and I say this is the period uh, where it's set this is the general uh, theme of the book um, and I usually send him some ideas and he then puts it all together and it does a really good job well they're yeah, gorgeous hide, they're hiding, really nice hiding the past is is telling its own story that, yeah. you know what I mean looking at the house and and I don't know if you guys have looked at it but the missing man and we got headstones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I'm thinking, okay, what is it? Is it going to happen in a cemetery or what? You know, so. Too funny. 
spyglass yeah. file looks like she's a Bond girl standing there. <laughs> with her girl and yeah, that was the cover of Spyglass file. So that's several different pictures that I, I took. So the, oh. the woman on the, on the front cover, she's a friend of mine. Um, and so I took her standing there with uh, the bike by the yeah. railings. Uh, the cliffs is a separate image that I took on a, a different time, a different place. And the Spitfires in the sky, they're a separate image that I took as well. And he basically pulled them all together and made this lovely cover. It's beautiful. It's very nice. Very well, I'm very pleased. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to do something technical. I hit the button a while ago and it probably came up and y'all saw it. So you have a special place where you like to write. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Don't say it, Sherry. Don't say it. <laughs> He's got a shed. <laughs> what, kind, what kind of shed, Sherry? <laughs> well, in the United States, <laughs> we would call it a she shed. Mm. Why is it called well, a she shed? I don't shed? live in the United States, so I don't call it that. I am going to see if I can pull up these pictures, and I don't know what happened to them. I had them pulled up. I don't know where they are. Are they on I'm your desktop? Yeah, can you guys see what I'm looking at? I pulled something up. Not yet. Can see my, okay, no. we can just see you. Okay, good. Well, let me. Okay, <laughs> let me see if I pull this up. If it comes up, it probably won't. You guys can't see that, can you? You can just see me. No. no. Eh, eh, well, you. isn't it? Um, what's his name? Had the little, the yeah. little, um. I will. Edgar Allan Poe. I can put. He have a little little place that he wrote. Yeah, I don't know why. Because remember, we've done this before, and I've been able to pull up pictures. So. Don't you when share I was your screen? Hang don't on. you do it? Yeah, share? yeah, I did, and I'm hitting it, and it's not the, the that file hmm. is not coming up. But what I will do is put it in the show notes. I'm going to put but it we're in not a blog post. But what? we're not seeing your screen at all. Are you're, you? Are you oh, not going to no. share your screen? Yeah, just seeing you. Yeah, uh, that's what I'm saying. I'm trying to share my screen. So I've got it up and I've got, and I click on it and it's the tech is not being kind to me tonight. Anyway. Well, I will say you have yeah. next to the record button that is on. <laughs> oh, oh, there you go. go. There, there you go. Is. There's, a little There's Nathan Sheed. <laughs> no, that worked. That worked. That oh, was wait, beautiful. I don't see it. Oh, put it back up. Shelly missed it. Shelly missed it. Sorry, I didn't miss it. I'm telling you, there's a look, little lock. Look at that. Oh, over there. Can, see it? Can, oh, how yeah. adorable. Can you see it? Very good. Yeah. And if you follow Nathan's Instagram, he's got a picture and it's got the path through right the grass now. where he's gone <laughs> back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Every day, so much. like a little animal. <laughs> and there's a path so it's really fun so it's like a, a sheep path a sheep path back and forth back and forth they're but, all over england so <laughs> maybe it's a sheep shed a sheep shed <laughs> there you go. No, but but you you built it you and yes. yeah your brother, brother you said yeah you yeah. actually yeah. built it so you have a place exactly. to go yeah. and get away yeah. from all the distractions that you have exactly. in the house yeah. that's yeah. not a nice <laughs> way to call robert <laughs> Yes, for all your mockery, it's a very nice shed. <laughs> <laughs> I call it my writer's cabin. Actually. There you go. There it's you not go. a shed. Yeah. It's not your shed. writer's. It's your writer's cabin. All right. Yeah. So, so he says. No, it you really know looks what? nice. No, I'm it's actually really nice. Yeah, Shelley. I'm it's actually so very cool. jealous of that. Oh yeah. And it's no. got heating, and it's got lights, and internet, and everything. It's oh, amazing. Mm. That's great. How how long do you stay out there? I mean, do you have a do you just go out there when the the you know inspiration strikes, or do you have a schedule? Um, no, I don't have a like a rigorous schedule. So um, once I've kind of got up, and I usually go for a run or take uh, my son to school. So once I've done that, I come back down to the shed and, uh, as you call it, and um, I'll probably do, I, I kind of probably do something like roughly 10 till 4-ish would be an average okay. day. Okay. Sometimes, you know, I, I'll come in earlier or, you know, start late or whatever, but I, I'm quite, I'm quite good because, I, I mean, the, the main reason is I, I completely love doing what I do. So it's never, I've never, ever had a day when I think, oh, I've got to go to work today. I, I want to get there. The opposite is true. I, you know, I... I miss it a lot. Mm. So um, I, I spend as much time as I can down there. <laughs> I don't blame you. I so blame are you in Kent or are you in Utah? Uh, I, I mean, I, right now I'm in Spanish 
Cork, Utah, <laughs> uh, but, but, but for the most part, I'm in Kent. I'll be back in Kent in two days. Yeah, that's where my that's where my she shed is. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to get back Love to the she shed. But yeah, yeah we, we knew oh, he would still be there. So that's why we said, for some reason, he doesn't want to get up like at one o'clock in the morning and join us. No, so, hmm. it really wouldn't. It wouldn't be pretty. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Laura. So I think it's actually as much as we're teasing, I think it's fabulous because I'm actually very jealous. And we were mm. talking the other night mm -hmm. that he doesn't have the things going on in the household that just distract yeah. you. Exactly. You know, you this is out of place, so you go take that, and then exactly, while you're on your yeah. way, Empty take that to the laundry room, you yes, see that, yeah. that needs to go done, and it's just a never-ending, exactly, one leads yes. to another. Yeah, no, it's so, very quiet down there. I don't have any music on or any distractions. I just go down there. There's nothing else I can do down there, really. I've got my computer and some books, and so I just get on with my work. What's do you turn off social... <laughs> Do you turn off Say social media? Again. So we can't. We do can't you turn it. off social? <laughs> do you turn off social media? I mean, all your interruptions when you write. Do you just write and then later go back to your email and social media? How do you manage uh, that? I, ideally, yes. Um, <laughs> and if I if I'm really in the the writing moment, then I won't look. But um, sometimes, yes, if I'm kind of gazing out of the window for a long time. <laughs> trying to find inspiration and I might pick up my phone and then start to have a look through but um, I try not to I try to do it later on in the day and just leave that to one side you know and just concentrate yeah so I have two questions all righty first what's the dog's name doodles doodles <laughs> and second <laughs> I see you're from Kent mm. And I have ancestors from Kent. Oh, oh right. Whereabouts? Kent. <laughs> That's all I know. <laughs> That's all she knows. I don't know what area in there, and I'd go into the tree. But they're Bordens, and they left. Some, I, I'm assuming they're still there, but they came over here in the early 1700s and came into New right. Jersey and Virginia and places mm -hmm. like that. So that's a, besides London, that. In a couple other places, that's the only place I know. <laughs> I've never it's, it's been a nice there part yet. Of the world. It's nice, nice place. I like it. <laughs> yeah. You travel a lot. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I'm on your I'm on your Instagram. She's stalking so not, you. She's stalking I'm not you, stalking you. You know. I'm not stalking you. Well, I was trying to look for the she shed to see if okay. it, it's on there. We need, to, yeah, I'm we need to make you a sign. That's we, we, need him, we need you to get him. We need to get him a shed. Is going to be on the, one of the covers. Are you working on another book? <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. I'm always working on another book. Um, <laughs> yes, I am. Do you so have? Do you have a? Do you know when it's going to come out? I mean, I know you're just starting, but do you have in your head a, a rough estimate of when you want it to come out? Uh, yeah, I do. Usually, I, I don't know why, but when when I start a book, I'm usually pretty good at, at feeling how long that's going to be in terms mm -hmm. of the word count. Okay. Um. So the Sterling affair, I knew was going to be a long one, and it and it's the longest I've ever done. Mm -hmm. It's hundred and forty thousand words. So yeah. So and I worth thought, every I know, word. Is, <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of aiming for October, November last year to have that released, and it just mm -hmm. was going and going and going. Um. And so, yes, yeah, so I, I usually have a pretty good idea. So something that's um, maybe 70, 80,000 words, I can usually do those in sort of six to eight months. Wow. So, uh, yeah, so maybe the next one could be late summer with a bit oh. of luck. Oh, yeah. wow. So okay. has something already triggered that thought as far as where your character is going next? Yeah, so, or, um, or do you have they, several or as does it come as you're writing one does something spark off and say, you know what, that's another lead. I need to take it that way. You know, the next yes. book. Okay. Yeah, so it, it, in, the, in the current, uh, you know, the latest, The Sterling Affair, um, there's a few uh, hints dropped at what the next Morton book will be. But actually, a little bit of an exclusive for you, Sherry. The next <laughs> book is going to be the start of a new series that so won't be Morton. He'll be coming later. Uh, and this will be a book, uh, A Cold Case Murder, um, being solved by genealogy. That's great. 
That's yes. going to be so that much fun. Oh, so Melissa, good. look at Melissa. Melissa's mm. hand went up. Yes, <laughs> Melissa. <laughs> um, Shelly and Sherry know this about me, but I am a, a purist. I read pretty much only nonfiction um, histories, biographies, and so um, I'm enjoying your book. My question is, do you see yourself ever writing a nonfiction history Ooh, book of any kind question. having to do with genealogy? So I, I possibly, um, I actually started in nonfiction. So um, in 2005, I wrote a book called Hastings at War, which which was about the town I grew up in, Hastings. You might know it from the Battle of Hastings. Um, and I wrote about that during the Second World War. So it, it suffered quite a lot, it was bombed a lot. There were spies in the town and I was talking about rationing and evacuation. Um, and I did four non-fiction books altogether. Yeah. And that that's kind of a, has helped me, give me a bit of a background for this series. Because although it's fiction, I do try to keep the historical aspects uh, accurate and correct. Um, but whether I'll do any more, yeah, possibly. And right now, um, it's not on the cards, but you never know. Mm. Yep. You never know. Yeah. Good question, I'm Melissa. Here. Yeah. <laughs> Does anybody else? We I know that you are sitting in a Starbucks, and I know that you need to get going <laughs> on your trip so that you. I have one last oh, question, Melissa. Go ahead. Um, I mentioned earlier that I'm an aspiring writer. I have not, I've published in a lot of magazines and I write my own stuff and everything, but I've not published a book, which I have a gazillion ideas for books. Mine would be a nonfiction. It's going to be my yeah. first, probably going to be about researching and archives doing that because that's how I'm really, really passionate about that. Um, what advice do you give to aspiring writers? It would be simply just to get on with it as much as you can and with busy life, you know, um, mm -hmm. just to do something regularly because when I started teaching um, I kept thinking oh yeah I'll do it on a weekend I'll do it in the holidays and I just never did because on the weekends I was doing planning and marking and then in the holidays I was just too exhausted to do anything <laughs> um, and so then I, and I really wanted to get hiding the past out the first book so then I started to set an alarm for 5 a.m. and I would wow. do an hour yeah you know, and I'd do <laughs> it was painful I would do an hour of uh, <laughs> writing each day before school and um it really was tiring like by 7 30 if i was still awake each night it was it was a miracle but i did it you know i did enough to then get get that book out and the same for the second book as well um so i would just say to just um yeah just do even a tiny amount even if you just do 100 words a day just for four days a week just to do something and even if it's rubbish and you go oh, it's just, just a whole week is rubbish but at least you can at least you can delete it you know but yeah. if you've done nothing you've got nothing there even even on a bad day when i think i'm not feeling like i i want to write and but i have written or i'm not feeling well um i go back and i think yeah there's there's still enough in there like i don't i don't need to delete everything i did i can you know there, there's still stuff in there so i would just say just 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 do something as often as you can Great, right. great. I've got one last thing I wanted to ask you. So you just spent the last week with a booth at Roots Tech talking to people about your books. Is there anything that we haven't asked you or somebody coming up to you hasn't asked you that you really, really want people to know about Morton or the books or any of that kind of thing? Or you, is there anything <laughs> that you've not been able to share that you really want to share about yourself, the books, your process, anything that hasn't been asked that you've said, why hasn't anybody ever asked me this? <laughs> I feel like I've shared everything possible. <laughs> <laughs> and you're probably going, that like... question again. <laughs> <laughs> I know the, the, the question I get asked the most actually, at Roots Tech is which one's your favorite? And I kind of have to say, well, you know, and they're asking because they, th they see eight books and they think, which one, which one shall I buy? And I kind of have to say, well, if you haven't read any, I would start at the beginning, but actually my favorite, was probably um, the Spyglass File because it's it was because it's loosely based on my grandmother's story. Mm -hmm. But I actually think now it's probably the Sterling Affair, um, just because it was such a challenge to write it. It was so complicated. The storyline is right. the most complicated I've ever done. Yes, um, but I enjoyed I enjoyed that challenge. You know, mm -hmm. um, I'm glad it's done. I'm glad it's done. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think that's probably my favourite now. It's the most layered and complicated yes. and uh, interesting and because it's based um, in 2019, it's got the most um, up-to-date mm -hmm. genealogy in there and, you know, lots of DNA and uh, genetic genealogy. So, yeah, that didn't really answer your question, but 
there we no, are. no, no, no. But you know, I was thinking when you <laughs> right. said people are asking you which book is your favorite, that's kind of like asking somebody which child is your favorite. They're yes, all exactly. different, yes. you yeah. know, and you love them for different reasons. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's what I would say. Which one of your children, and they'd probably name one, but you know, <laughs> just <Yeah>. in case. <laughs> 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 the one the one that's closest to you at that moment at that moment yeah. right yeah. would be your favorite so yeah. anyway we will let you go because i know you've got traveling to do and we appreciate Thank that you. we could catch you and we appreciate the starbucks for uh allowing yes. you and turning down their music I have my drink first. there you go you go <laughs> right ahead <laughs> And I, know, in so, so I know you're we'll, a little alone, so if Robert wants to wave for a minute, it's really fine. We don't Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Robert. Robert. I like to so wave I have a to Robert. Where is he? Hey, over there. Oh, he's all the way over. Oh, you Come really on. banished God. him. Did you really you? banish I, I him? Said, for? I said, yeah, I sent him away. Sitting well, sitting tell him he can come plate. wave and say hi to us, and then we'll tell him briefly. You, you, you're, you're permitted. You're permitted now, since we're done. I want to know what right, tell, tell him we're still recording, so he's going to behave himself. He's still recording, so he's going to behave. I can't hear you, though. You can hear oh, okay. Me. Oh, that's right. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I can you, love me. I love you. You're amazing. <laughs> oh, thank you. You're so welcome. Thank can you. you. Can you but, see why I need a she shed now? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I do need a she shed. All right. Well, well, I do have a question uh -oh. before he goes. All right. Okay. Mm, uh -oh. Really quick. No, yes. no, no. It's a it's a good question. Okay. Will we see a segment in the new book in Starbucks? Oh, <laughs> there you go. Yes, there's going to be a murder in Starbucks. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's what the Borden, like, a girl did in the Borden family. You guys yes. know that old saying. That's right. Lizzie? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that's the oh, that's true. That was. Yes. Uh oh, Laura's going for it. We shouldn't tell him that, right? Well, we have kept you. We have kept you long enough, and so with that, I want to say goodbye to everybody. Thank you so much. Safe travels, and we yes, will see you travels. next time on Gen Friends. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.